My name is Rhapsody and welcome back to Monster Train. We're going to be playing Covenant 25, random, random. No need to go into a, a custom challenge here and overcomplicate things. Let's see what we get. Hopefully it's one of the clan combinations I haven't already completed with, but I'm fine with anything. Uh, that is Umbra Lead Stygian Follow. I probably completed with this before. Steward's gain, plus five, plus five, damage shield, two, and multi-strike. You know what? Yeah. That makes them good real, uh, good targets to gorge things. Hopefully we get Architect here. Oh. Dang. Uh, without Architect, I'm probably going to go for Trample. The idea being that the other floors with my train stewards are going to be our kind of like quote-unquote gorge floors. Not really triggering gorge, but as close as we can get to it here. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. Uh, so we obviously can't do that top floor. Hmm. What's the shade splitter got in? And Tumbra? Fine. So we take nine damage to the top layer. We should be okay ish from there on out. Apparently not. Uh, yeah, we can exactly kill those frontliners. Hopefully, we get a morsel with... Dang. A morsel with any damage would have had the ability to kill the collector for us. Okay. Uh, well, this one's easy. Crypt Builder, Mind Collapse, Shade Splitter. Get that out. The only problem is we've now gone through that whole cycle without setting anything up at all. Good lord, those are so powerful early. Yeah, that's actually going to be enough already. Ugh. Gotta love the prototype's ability to do things like that. Making of a morsel. The morsel, specifically morsel mining, giving plus five, plus five, seems like it's really good if I have, like, a bunch of multi-strike units. So, yeah, let's take a making of a morsel. I have two crypt builders in the base deck, so an offering token makes sense as well. Okay. What are we going to do for our other floors? Right? Is the big question. Because we've got a trample floor, and then we've got probably two floors of train stewards doing their stuff. Uh, the only problem is that's not going to scale high enough to kill any bosses at all. Okay, so the hell vent here alongside a Umbra unit. So do I want to mega upgrade a card? Right? Maybe I want to just mega, mega upgrade a card by going over to the Merchant of Magic and like double cost reducing, making a morsel or something like that. Uh, or cost reduce holdover or holdover on offering token or plus 10 on mind collapse. Um, and then I end up duping that in the next hell vent. I don't know about that actually. Worst case scenario over here. Ooh, multi strike, actually. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah, that's the apply frostbite three to attack the units. Ugh. Oh, that's really appealing. Put that down on the bottom floor. Give it multi strike. Yeah. We give it multi strike and. Do I want to give it quick as well, later? Or do I just give it the sweep right now? Ooh, ooh, I'm going to dupe it in the next area. I give it the sweep right now, and then I give a plus 25 to a train steward. Okay, okay. No, 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 no. This is how we're going to go. So the floors are going to be from bottom to top. Uh, and from, uh, like, front facing the enemy to the back, right? Train steward with plus 25 health. Uh, sweeper called Kelly, right? It was called Kelly. Yeah, called Kellia. Then the next floor, another one of the the train stewards and another called Kellia. And then the top floor is going to be the penumbra with trample. Uh, so that's going to be fine for what? That's going to be fine for everything except for two big dudes. That covers sweep. That covers anti-sweep as well because I gave extra health to my own units. It covers 
bosses, like easily, because this is ridiculously scaling Frostbite. The only thing is we have to find a, a better frontliner for, for Cold Kellia when fighting the bosses. Maybe we just like have the train suits around for a while and transition out of them pretty quickly. It really, we, we need, the problem is these two classes don't have the ability to give like a bunch of armor or a bunch of extra healing or regen uh, to a to a frontliner. So we do need to find another way to get a frontliner out there. That will give enough time for Kolkelia to build up enough frostbite on the boss for it to be lethal. I still think we're okay there. I have to go for the unit draft here. 100% necessary. I was just talking about how I want a frontliner for the Cold Kellia, and this is where we will find that frontliner. Uh, so Trample Top, Cold Kellia, Train Steward, and you encant on a seven, but won't do any extra damage, but you will heal one. I would take the Shade Splitter. Might as well get the kill on that floor if I can. Rubble Morsel is exactly what I wanted there because now I have the ability to feast, getting back one energy, so now I can kill you, and then Shade Splitter, and then Rubble Morsel. Ease. Let's go Crypt Builder, Mind Collapse to take down the Frontliner, and then Train Steward. We're actually getting like perilously close to killing the enemy here. There we go. Jump block with Rubble Morsel for kill. So this is the stewardship challenge, right? This is this is what we're doing at the moment. Uh, Pact Morsel, Mind Collapse, Immortal Trade. Oh god, Immortal Trade is a way to turn the... No, but they have Multi-Strike. Immortal Trade is bad with Multi-Strike. I was about to say, I I Immortal Trade is a way to turn my, my train stewards into boss killing units because they'll just revive their health the entire time. Uh, but the problem with that, obviously, is that applying three lifesteal is three hits of lifesteal, and I have multi-strike on those units, so it's only two. Um, so it's about you know, half as effective. Uh, but God, is, is it still what I need, though? Can I start taking Ember Train already? Surely not, right? I'm taking it because I'm worried if I don't take it, I've already lost. <laughs> ah, bugger. Crucible Warden gaining damage shields for each of its gorges seems nice. Do we have Stygian Banner in the next area next to a Merchant of Steel? And that's actually our last banner as well. This is something I need to consider more commonly, right? Something I need to consider very, very intently is when do we stop getting banners? Because oftentimes I will plan, oh, I'm going to find my unit, you know, after this. And there's no more units after that, except for, you know, a rare unit drop from Fell. I think I hard pass these though. If there was the Crucible that gives lifesteal, I may have taken that. There we go. Like that one. And then Duke Corkelia. Okay, literally, like, we need space and we need more morsels. So I now heavily regret the immortal trade. I was thinking at that same time about taking packed morsels instead uh, for the possibility of this kind of thing happening. Um, but, you know, didn't want to make the really risky play there. Umbra Consumable for space prism. Happy with it. I just need to find consistent production of morsels now. Give me gem trove. Give me Antumbra salt. Uh, give me packed morsels. I'll remove consume from it. Just, just anything, please. Yeah, we're going to have to wait for a space prism on that second floor before it's actually useful, though. Come 
on Space Prism. I know I put you in the deck just a couple moments ago. Uh, definitely can't put down both the train stewards. May as well kill one. I mean, I kind of want the train suit in the front line there to die. You to chump block a little bit more for Corcalia. There's finally our first space prism. Long overdue, but all's right with the world now. Right, we should be pretty comfy. Definitely offering through the Crypt Builder. Give you life steal, no reason not to, I guess. Perfect. Alright, this rare card is gonna be hugely defining to the run. Siren Song, Umbra Stone. Oh, that's the Titan, yikes. Um. I'm gonna take a Siren Song. I'm gonna give it a Permafrost. Uh, hmm. I do wanna make a Titan Sentry like a frontliner for a Kolkalia. That just seems perfect. So I, I have a three floor plan right now. Ooh. Not used to doing that. <laughs> Uh, well, I chalk it up as exploration, right? I want to see how this works out. Unless that's a totem down there, I probably don't care about it. Plus 25 and endless looks really... Oh my god, it is a totem. Offering monument. Uh... I don't play that many spells on the same floor. I don't think I'm an incant deck at all. But I do think that if I get endless and plus 25 on the titan sentry i just play a titan sentry all the time i also think the crucible collector needs extra stats yeah it just it straight up just needs stats those two pickups great i also would have taken you know plus five plus ten happily it needs to have enough uh, uh, sorry enough enough health that it lives through a single onslaught of all enemies attacking it so that it then has the opportunity to lifesteal back against them. Number of enemies enter with spikes four. That is a trouble for us. How much trouble is it for us? Because if we set up the Titan Sentry on the bottom floor, the Quill Marksman's died of that. So then the Clipped Reflector is like, you know, eight damage per wave against the Corkelias. I really want the artifact. If we get like double gorge effect or the cuddle beard for the frostbite effect increase, nothing, nothing can really happen to us past that point, right? In case I get a spell to take out the backliner. Hmm. Well, 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 what have we here? Santa Claus heart. Well, I'm really scared. I don't. I'm very worried about the setup that we've put together here. Do not get me wrong. I am extremely, extremely terrified by this. I just think that picking up the artifact is hugely important here. Oh, 
I'm going to make a Morsel Miner and put that on the bottom floor here. The idea is that it'll buff the Titan Sentry, and the Titan Sentry will then attack uh, after the end of its rounds, which is just more Frostbite to all enemies. Yeah, at Frontliner needs to die so I can deal more damage to Clip Guardian here. So we've now lost both of our Cold Kellyers. That's okay. So we've got Endless on this Titan Sentry, so it'll go up to the next floor as well. Let's pop both of those down there. The Titan Sentry wants to go in the front line, so you go there. This is all just set up for the Titan Sentry. Titan Sentry goes there. So yeah, the spikes were definitely, definitely risky. We had enough different ways to deal with- Oh my- What? That's exactly what I asked for. Thanks? I need to cannibalize 100%. Uh, none of those though. Did I not exactly say that getting the Relic that Gorgeous twice would be a huge upgrade for us? It's remarkable. All right. I need to get more consistent morsel generation, so that's going to have to be provided by the Merchant of Magic. Double stack. Double stack on Siren Song is basically delete the top floor whenever a top floor is there. I like it. Go for a plus 10 on a mine collapse and a negative one on cannibalize as well. Do that all before we go over here. Just in case here was the opportunity to dupe. Plus two capacity on the middle floor. My God. We we need more consistent morsel generation. Like I, I've been stressing that for a couple minutes now. But... It, it gets stronger and stronger every relic we pick up, the fact that we need that. Uh, enemy sent to a spell shield too. That is not relevant. Irrelevant. Hopefully I get a cold Kelly next round. That really sucks. Do I put now a Titan Sentry up here? Because uh, the Titan Sentry gets the Collector. As well as thins down the enemy field, right? I hate, I hate that. I hate that I had to do that. Don't like it at all. This is the problem with having a three floor plan because I didn't get my minions to support the build until very late. My kill minions were just lacking. Uh... Cannibalize the one that's about to die anyway, I guess. Give the frontliner there some damage. You can have lifesteal. Like, yeah, this will work against the rest of the floor, at least. Let's make a morsel, pop that down in the front line. Honestly, there's nothing really else to do right now. Actually, I'm going to Siren Song you just so that I get my lifesteal on the next attack. Call it proactive healing. Right. One 
shield down. Two shields down, and then we actually get to do the 60 damage. A lot of extra damage we get out of that. I'm gonna fish for lifesteal or damage shield. Yeah, either of those. Lifesteal would have been a bit, lot better, but. Go. If we get the cuddle beard, my god, if we get the cuddle beard. Actually, you know what? Siren Song. Get destroyed by the pyre. <laughs> <coughs> Shad Mitosis is super important. Uh, silence to enemy units, Surf the chase, is that important in your fight? No, it's not. Crystalline seeds, also not. Ice storm, also not. I, I have to go to the Merchant Trinkets. I need to find the Cuddle Beard. What? Okay, grant plus two sacks of Frostbite each time it's applied. So... Every time that Kogelia attacks is five instead of three, and every time that uh, Titan Sentry is attacked is five instead of three. Uh, this this build is now ready to win, frankly, at this point. Uh, I just need to set it up and have my units live while they do it. You are actually kidding me at this point, right? Railforge's hammer is just plus one capacity on each floor. This frees up my ability to now take something other than capacity, like, oh, I don't know, maybe draw so that I can more consistently set up my opening. The problem with taking draw in the opening is unless I get extra energy, I might draw a hand worth of cards and I can't play all of the minions. That could be a problem. Oh, this sucks. <laughs> I have no one that I can uh, cannibalize. Yeah, if only we drew one more card there and uh, got uh, Titan Sentry. I mean, Titan Sentry would have been fine because Zendless. Let's put you there and have you die. But it really feels like Kolkelia should just be behind the crucial the crucible collector now. But it really, really feels like that for some reason. I wonder why. Double shade split. Really, unfortunately, we're not going to have the ability to feed them on this floor. So I guess low extra health there. All I have to do. If I put them on the mid floor, they would have gotten killed by the sweep. Two more morsels. I'm not even going to bother with the morsel offering here. I just need to get morsels into the Crucible Collector. I'm actually, you know what? Yeah, I, I already am going to hard commit to that. very set. Two rubble morsels. I don't need to feast on those right now. In fact, there's no real benefit to doing so anyhow. Mmm. Shroud Mitosis. God, it would have been nice if I could have gotten a good effect out of Shroud Mitosis. Endless. Sacrifice. 
Endless again. <laughs> okay. Frostbite is absolutely shredding through all these bosses. Umbra, Deep Offering, and Ice and Pyre. Uh, honestly, money. I think I need the draw more than I need the energy. I think the mind collapses just tip it towards the draw. More card removal is always pretty effective. It's also cost reduction on my cards if I just go for the Merchant of Magic cost reduce, reroll, cost reduce. Which isn't super unlikely for like a making of Morsel and Traumatosis being made cheaper. Hold over. Holdover Shroud Mitosis is huge. The only problem is it stops on the one turn that I don't have any morsels anymore to feed it. And Cannibalize is huge, but again, it stops when I don't have anyone. I'm going to take the Shroud Mitosis. Removing a Frozen Lance and another Frozen Lance. We have energy costs, so I guess I don't really want to ascend my enemies. Take the trap shoot. Also, that just sends them back down to the bottom to get more frostbite and to take more damage to all the frostbite they are already stacked with. Big trample. They have armor 20. So, those shade wings. Twelve, another ten, twenty-two. They won't die to a single cold Kelia attacking them. The thing is, the Titan Sentry gets killed by two Shade Wings, right? I want the money. The Titan Sentry gets killed by two Shade Wings, but it comes back. There you go. Just like that. 10, 15, 15, 15. Oh my god, you don't even actually attack behind it. <laughs> Get got. Let's uh, pop a penumbra on top. Do I put another cold Kelly on the bottom floor? more frostbite early we just have to play a titan sentry every turn is that that hard Yeah, the problem becomes if we don't lose a Titan Sentry in a single turn. That, uh, that, 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 that becomes an issue right there. I can use Crypt Builder here to save extra health on Corkelia, but I don't think I want to do that. I think I want to go Shade Splitter, Shade Splitter again, looking for something better, do not find something better, so I should just put it on the floor that... I benefit from it the most. So now you have ridiculous energy for next turn, but more than that, we have a bunch of lifesteal on that minion. Okay. So if I just pop that in front, we can save you. Get... Again, way too much energy next turn.
I like just using the train skewers as buffers here, uh, buffers here rather. It's working out pretty well. Unfortunately, the Shroud Mitosis is not going to have any use here. I have literally no valid target for it, so I can't play it and get it to hold over. Ah. I have discovered a problem. If this Titan Sentry does not die right now, I lose. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll still be fine on this floor, probably. Oh, just does get a little spicy. That's not what I wanted. I'm not drawing back to that card in time to use it anyway. Why do I keep tapping away from the floor where I actually want to use that? Ooh, the shade wings in the back line don't even die here. God, that sucks. Let's go. Titan Sentry. Okay. Sorry, I was trying to figure out whether or not it was going to be good to try and sacrifice something in order to get extra units of P to the Crucible Collector with the Feast uh, and the Shroud Mitosis before I put down the Titan Sentry or something like that. Uh, but no, yeah, the Titan Sentry just got stats for days. All I needed is the backline is taken out there so that I can have a fair fight. Alright. Cash in my extra 400. Grovel does seem appropriate now, doesn't it? Mm, yeah, none of those do. Okay. I mean, I don't even have the ability to use more minion upgrades at this point, so I'm going to go for the Merchant Magic. Double stack. It's an extra damage shield. It is nice. Well, let's look at the Merchant of Trinkets as well. First time you summon a morsel unit each turn, draw one, as well as the Against Steel for Red Card and turn draw one. That is really annoying that I don't have the ability to buy both of those. Yeah, it's exactly 10 more than I have. So, do you have any card that. Ex uh, is not your champion. I'm honestly actually thinking of another Corkelia. I think it might be Titan Sentry. Then the midline is Titan Sentry, Titan Sentry, Cold Kellia, Cold Kellia. Because the Titan Sentry needs to be able to take enough damage. Or tank enough damage. Let's think about the removals, right? Frozen Lights, get the heck out of here. Unupgraded Mind Collapse, get the heck out of here. Or is it a Mortal Trade? Mortal Trade's still decent in the final cycle, against the boss at least. 
because it might be like reduce the cost of grovel as well as double stack it and then dupe that. Trees went damaged, so revenge wouldn't even trigger them. Now you know what? I am duping the the Titan Sentry. Both of them don't need to be in play at all times, but I do need to make sure that I have one in play at all times, at least. Uh, we're gonna draw on enough turns that'll be viable for us, I think. And then here, I think I still actually will go with the Grubble cost reduction. <laughs> I'm also going to pop a Surge Stone on a Crypt Builder because it's just not good. Reroll, plus 20 magic power, consume. Put that on Mind Collapse even? Yeah. Alright, Seraph. Unfortunately, Seraph is going to be removing half a buff and uh, debuff stack effects, which is pretty much exactly the worst thing that could happen for us. Oh well. I drew a card there, didn't I? Okay, it was just train steward, thankfully. But if we lost the Cold Kelia to that, that would have been like actually tragic. Uh Titan, Cold Kelia, Cold Kelia. We're finally reasonably set up. I'll save the trap shoot for later, I think. It's not necessary to throw it out now just to prevent some ember drain. Okay. Unfortunately, I don't have the energy to play any of these. Yay! Seriously, that's awesome. Because it means that I have to wait for this Titan Sentry to die before I can play a Titan Sentry again. Yeah, we're about to pay for that on the top line. Don't like how rarely I actually get to play any of my minions right now. It's uh, <laughs> not great. Um, I am going to trap shoot you literally just to prevent the ember drain now. It's the same thing that I said I wasn't going to do. I am now going to do because uh, time's a dial. That Gilded Wing's almost dead. Shade Splitter, pop you there without a Harvest Trigger available. Cannibalize. God, I wish I had the Siren Song at a better time. Um, pop Lifesteal up there, which is probably way too late, right? Do I have to Ember Drain my own units right now? I, I may actually have to Ember Drain just to keep you alive. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's not gonna do it. Ugh. One Titan Sentry available at the end here, thanks. past this point, right? You cannibalize you. Down some other units. There you go. Absolute level best that I could do, Seraph. So I was thinking that the dupe of the Titan Sentry was going to be what I needed to deal with exactly what we came up against, but the fact that I got locked out of four energy every other turn because of the Pyre Wings uh, actually just wasn't something I was prepared for. It just legitimately wasn't, unfortunately. Uh, I needed more cards to be zero cost by that point. Let's have a look at the run summary. I don't know how I would have gotten you know, the Titan Sentries to be zero cost or anything like that, unfortunately. Um, but more of the Shade Splitters being zero cost and stuff like that actually would have also helped. No, it's showing all my cards as non-golden for some reason. Weird. Uh, the Crucible Collector was our best chance at like standing against the boss for a while, but unfortunately all of the waves before that, if I put the Crucible Collector in the front, then the the, uh, the Crucible Collector would die. But if I didn't put it in the front, it couldn't gorge. So I think like ideal preparation for that would have been like getting the Titan Sentries earlier, putting both of them on the bottom floor, then putting Titan Sentry Double Core Kellier on the second floor and just feeding the Titan Sentry consistently, uh, the Crucible Collector consistently. I think that there, there was a specific reason with the draw at the opening that prevented me from doing like a really good play like that because I had to put in Titan Sentry on the second floor and then I kept being behind the eight ball and having to put Titan Sentries on the second floor in order to save things. This wasn't far from winning. This was extremely, extremely close to winning. Literally all it needed was like extra health on the Crucible Collector or a different order of draw at the start. Or maybe even like getting the Mind Jacks before the Light of the Seraph. Because if I had have done that, or even, sorry, the Rail Forge's Hammer before the Light of the Seraph, if I'd gotten either of those, I may not have even taken the capacity from the Light of the Seraph, in which case I would have had Energy Hersel's Compound, which would have been enough. Yeah. Many, many different ways for this to have gone slightly differently, but this is the way that it went. For the moment, my name's been Rhapsody, the name of the game. It's been Monster Train. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves. There's a playlist in the description down below with all of my content of the game past, present, and future. And hopefully we'll see you next time.